Hello, everyone. I wanted to talk about AI, large language models in particular, and why we can't just trust the output that they're giving us at face value just because we don't understand a concept that we're asking it. Or maybe we get a confirmation bias because it spits out something that makes sense, uh, given the question that it's being asked. And I want to show why that can be very problematic, especially when you're doing applied tasks um, and you need to validate the answers that the AI is giving you as well. So as a lot of you know that hang out with me, I I've always really enjoyed puzzles, ciphers, codes, things like that. So I do a lot of that in my spare time because it's fun for me, especially now that I can see. So we're going to start with an example for ChatGPT to solve. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and well, I'll show you my i'm going to upload this as a git repo when we're done here uh for everyone to use and i'm also going to include a puzzle that you can try to get chat gpt to solve yourself or you can solve it yourself um in the video description i'd also like to point out that i am running a gofundme for the next week to try to get the surgery for my left eye covered uh now that i'm done with the plugs let's go ahead and get into what we're gonna do so I have these two Python scripts that I can provide a keyword with, and they will create a ciphertext using a visioneer square. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry, um, but I understand the mathematics behind it, and ChatGPT understands the mathematics behind it too, which is why it's a little irritating that it will spit out utter nonsense when you give it everything it needs to do all the math. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and cat our example text it's a poem that i had chat gpt write for us um in another prompt uh it's just a little cyberpunk poem about joining a you know a hacker space or a think tank um i'll include the example text too just because it's good it's got enough characters and stuff like that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count the number of characters in example.txt so that we can more easily validate the solution that ChatGPT is going to feed us. So as you can see, there's 895 characters in that. Um, so now we're going to encrypt it. We're going to give, as you saw, I also had secret at the top of it to give us the keywords so we have a pattern of repeating words so we can validate whether or not ChatGPT got it right and whether or not it got the rest of the text right. So we're gonna go ahead and run those Python scripts that I made uh, on the example.txt. So, and we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run it blank first so that you can see what it looks like. Oh, whoops, except I, I always fucking do this. <laughs> uh, make a mistake. Okay, so anyway, secret. I'm glad I have debug text in my own code. Uh, so when we provide it with that, we're going to get... Can't open file. Uh, oh, God. I'm so... I'm out of it. I apologize. I am going to do this in one take. I'm not paying the best attention. It's been a long day I spent at the eye doctor. So, okay. Now, okay. So as you can see, we have a pattern of three repeating words that we can use as the key. And you can see that it does a different offset per word, which the square is going, that's, that's how it works. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy that to our clipboard. And we're going to make sure that our fingers aren't offset. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask OpenAI, can you make any sense of this? So it thinks it's a random string. Okay. I'm going to tell OpenAI that I believe this is ciphertext. I'm going to ask it to do what's called a frequency analysis on it. This is how you would normally solve a cesarean shift cipher, um, which a cesarean shift cipher is a very easy 
um, to break because it's a very simple mathematic equation. Um, if you're interested in that, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Um, so right now it thinks that maybe this is a cesarean shift cipher. So I'm going to ask it to do frequency analysis. Can you do a frequency analysis of the provided text? So this is pretty meaningless for the kind of cipher that we're using, but it's good to see that OpenAI knows that it, there's not a lot of conclusions that it can draw from this text. So I know the cipher text will be English in plain text. Okay, so it's explaining what kind of substitution t cipher this might be. So we're going to go ahead and confirm. And positive, if I can spell correctly, that I believe the keyword is secret. Can you decipher this text for me? So as you can see, it's, it's spitting out nonsense, but it does look similar to the original text that we gave it in ciphertext. So this can cause a lot of people to have confirmation bias. And uh, this is a big problem when people are using these AIs that aren't experienced enough to know better. Uh, so say they're using it to help them write a school paper or something like that. It can throw out a lot of nonsense like this. It'll do this with physics equations, chemistry, history, and medical questions as well. You, you absolutely have to validate what these AIs are spitting out at you because what it's done is it's correlated the problem that I've given it, which is that I have an encrypted message. It understands that this message is encrypted probably with a cipher. I've then confirmed that it is a visioneer or visionaire or I, I can't pronounce it. I don't speak French um, cipher. Uh, so then it spits out something that it thinks is relevant as the solution, even though it knows for a fact if I tell it that this isn't the solution because the character counts don't even add up. So I'm going to tell it that this is not correct. Character counts aren't even remotely the same. The original text has 895 characters counting the keywords validate that you have properly deciphered the keywords keyword is repeated three times at the top of the text and three times at the bottom of the text And we're going to go ahead and we're going to validate that ourselves real quick. So we're going to do wc-c example.text. We're going to get 895. Can you please try to decipher the message given the information I've provided? So see, it's, it's spitting out this nonsense again. So 
I can sit here and I can argue with it for an hour and it's just going to continue to spit out nonsense. A few weeks ago, it wasn't doing this. I think this has to do with the larger data set that it's been given. It has a lot more information. It's better at writing stories and poems and code even, but it's not capable of doing the specialized tasks that it was able to do a couple weeks ago. So it's given me this nonsense again. It's doubled down on it and it knows that this is wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it the script that I use typically to decrypt the uh, text. So I'm going to go ahead and cat decrypt pi can you this script is capable of deciphering the text. Can you validate it by using the keyword secret? Okay, so I can validate a solution for you, I want you to solve the original ciphertext using the keyword secret now that you have all of this extra information. Your first two solutions were wrong and nonsense. So, see, it, it now that I've provided it with that I can decipher the code, it's now correlating it with something else in its data set. This is what I'm talking about. So now I'm going to give it the actual uh, plain text. This is the actual oh, whoops, solution. below do you understand how i came to this solution well enough to validate my solution Why were you not able to do this so it, it does understand the problem it understands the solution it was able to do it but this is essentially what I'm getting at is that we need to validate the outputs that we're getting from these AIs and not take them at face value because we don't understand the problems either. Because I could ask it a problem totally unrelated to this, to something that I don't know a lot about, and it'll spit out something that looks valid and relevant enough for me to be like, oh, wow, it, it solved that problem or something like that. Now, if I were to ask it like, like, let's start a new chat. Hey, what's, oh, shit, sorry. Hey, what's, Four times eight. So like see it can it can do the math and it understands the math behind how the cipher was created too, which is just modular arithmetic. Uh so I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to create a square based on the keyword secret with the decryption script that I already gave it.
So you see how the offsetting is working? It, it, it started at S and so on and so forth. Now, this is a really, really easy problem to solve. Um, I'm not going to validate its response. I'm going to just assume that it's actually wrong. Uh, <laughs> which could be could be true, could not be true. We can actually validate it real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and... We know that it is wrong. Um, but the, the thing is that it understands how all the mathematics behind this work. And it's capable of understanding the patterns. But then when you get it to the point where it needs to spit out a solution, um, sometimes it will get stuck. And it'll spit something out that's relevant enough for you to look at it at first glance and assume that it's correct. We have to get around these assumptions, otherwise we're going to run into major problems as these AIs are used as teaching tools and things like that. That looks really pretty, <laughs> regardless. But uh, uh, this would be how like the code breaking would traditionally work if you weren't like me and writing Python scripts and things like that. Um, another thing that I'd like to touch on in a future video is the ethics of OpenAI using the name OpenAI and these the code for this not being totally publicly available and huge sections of the data set not being available. That's not open anymore. Yes, it's open for me to use, but by not providing that information in those data sets, we are having a huge impact on the environment retraining these AIs, like Facebook's AI, IBM's AI, Stanford's AI. That's a huge amount of carbon emissions because of the amount of computational power that it requires to train one of these AIs. Now, this is still a very impressive piece of software. It's just not intelligent. It's intelligent code. Whoever wrote all the code, all the people that wrote the code, the people that created the data set and things like that, that's very smart. Now, it's also a huge license violation because it's trained on a lot of open source code that's uh, GPL licensed. And so them licensing their data sets separate from GPL is a huge license violation. And I hope something eventually comes of that because for the good of humanity, this kind of technology needs to be open and transparent so that it can't be abused to spread misinformation and can't be abused in ways that things like search engine optimization are abused right now, or even social media algorithms are abused right now to spread misinformation, cheat advertising, do scams, things like that. Um, we need to touch on these issues, and I apologize for talking fast. I'm trying to keep this video shorter than 30 minutes. Uh, so if you need to slow it down, by all means do so. But we have a moral and ethical obligation to future generations to make sure that this technology is used for good. We have almost the entirety of human knowledge at our fingertips at all times now. And uh, having this closed off and these data sets closed off so that we have to retrain these uh, systems over and over and over again is very bad for a number of reasons. And one of the main ones is the environment. The carbon emissions required to train something this complicated, uh, is, they're just absurd. And uh, there's no reason for it. We have a complete data set now. It's been trained once. We can take these data sets and feed them into new systems and things like that. And I think that a big push from the free software community needs to be made towards this, especially with the fact that the data sets are violations of the open source licenses that we've adopted and pushed for for so long. Now, do I think that the data sets need to be split so that there's different ways to be compliant for the licenses? Yes. I think that there should be a GPL data set where all the stuff that was trained, it was trained on that was GPL or Creative Commons licensed is in that and so on and so forth. And I think that there need to be data sets that can be used for commercial applications and things like that too. But we need to stop wasting time retraining these AIs because it's taking up a lot of resources. And regardless of how we look at it, we might feel like we have unlimited resources, but in the end, you know, a hundred years from now, the carbon emissions necessary for doing this are just going to be as astronomical eventually as Bitcoin mining is, unless we can agree on a universal way of doing it. Uh, I hope that this was an informative video that you take away from it, that you should not ever take 
something an AI says or even a person says at face value without validating it, and you, especially in AI, because the AI has no accountability to you or anyone else. And while that seems extreme right now, it, as this technology evolves, these AIs are going to get better and better and more advanced, and they can be used and their biases can be weighted in ways to sway people's opinions and things like that in different directions. And it is very, very important that we learn to validate information that we are being given regardless of where it comes from. And if somebody tells you something that doesn't quite make sense to you, or an AI tells you something that doesn't quite make sense to you, you need to ask them how or it how it got that solution or it came to that conclusion or where it got that information. Because ChatGPT will make up sources when you ask it medical questions. And if you go to those links, they don't exist. So I hope this was a very informative video for you. I will try to do a blog write-up on it over the weekend. Um, I will include a simple puzzle for people to solve down below. And uh, if you're interested in encryption, artificial intelligence, Python scripting, things like that, give me a like a comment, hit that subscribe button, all that fun stuff. Um, if you've got some spare cash, I wouldn't mind it for my GoFundMe for my eyes either. Thank you so much. Um, I will try to work on getting video editing done in the future. I, had, I do know how to edit videos. I'm just very strapped for time right now with the eye surgery coming up and all the stuff that was going on for my eyes. So thank you so much. This was a long one.